Uh, we're going to move on to another aspect of letting consumers uh, merchandise for you, uh, getting uh, user-generated content and using it effectively. Our speakers are uh, Ryan Goldberg, who's director of e-commerce marketing at a retailer called I See Me, which makes personalized children's books. And he'll be speaking with Jay, uh, Jai Rawat, who is the uh, founder of, of Shop Socially, a social referral and loyalty marketing platform. So here they come. Okay, so here is Jai Rawat from Shop Socially. Hello, everyone. So we are going to talk about uh, some new strategies for generating UGC. You talked about uh, reviews. Uh, okay. All right. So I can just be a little bit. All right. So you, we just heard about uh, customer reviews. We're going to talk about a few other strategies that you can use for generating UGC at scale. Right. So um, the current UGC strategies that most of you are using probably are reviews and Q&A. How many of you are using either reviews or Q&A on your site? Pretty much everyone. Anyone using anything beyond or other than reviews and Q&A for UGC? No. All right, so let's talk about a couple of ideas. So we'll talk about two things. One, new strategies for creating UGC at scale, and also how you can boost participation in your existing strategies, which is reviews and Q&A. Uh, before we do that, a couple of challenges of generating UGC, right? The first is combating negative reviews, right? So as the saying goes, if someone is happy, they are going to tell three friends. If they are not happy, they are going to tell 30, or in the age of social media, probably 300 or 3,000, right? So how do you combat that? And secondly, it's the 1% it's the rule of content creation. There are very few people, only 1% people typically create content, and other 99% consume it. So how do you get more people to generate content for you? So those are the strategies that we're going to discuss today. Um, what we've done is we did some research to figure out what are the most exciting points in a customer's shopping journey. And we found there are two points of excitement that the customers typically have. One, right after they make a purchase. So as soon as they complete the purchase, they're excited about what they've just bought, right? And secondly, right after they receive the product. So it's a styrofoam effect. You know, you receive the product, you open the package, and you are really excited about the product that you just bought. So if you are able to engage the customers at these two points of excitement, we find that we can get them to really participate a lot more in generating content for you, as well as we can have them generate a lot of positive content for you as well. Okay? So before we begin, uh, just a uh, quick introduction to uh, Shop Socially and myself. Uh, Shop Socially is a one-stop unified marketing platform uh, for social referral and loyalty solutions. Uh, we have nine different solutions uh, that are part of our platform. Uh, we work with over 500 customers worldwide. Um, Jai Rawat, one of the co-founders and CEO of Shop Socially. Uh, this is my fourth startup. So creating new technologies and innovation is my passion. I have 20 patents myself. Um, and then I would like to invite uh, Ryan to talk a little bit about uh, himself, ICME, as well as um, some strategies that they are using on their site uh, for UGC creation. Ryan. So I'm Ryan Goldberg. I'm the director of uh, marketing here at ICME. Um, we basically, if you aren't familiar with our brand, we make personalized children's books. So that means a lot of things to a lot of different people. For us, what it means is when you order, you come to our website, you fill out a form with a child's name on it, you might upload a photo and do several things and we're gonna build a story custom to that child in particular. So that's what we mean. So it's very difficult to describe to our fans what really makes us different. So user-generated content is 
really key for us and to get that to get that rolling. So a few of the things that we did here is we wanted to look at a few things. We wanted one user generated content at what Jay was saying where you have those two main points of focus. You have when the user purchases they're really excited and when they and then you see another peak when they receive the product that they're really excited. So we wanted to not only get some of this user generated content but we wanted our users to buy, say these great things about us and then share that with everybody, which is kind of what I think everybody's kind of going for. Um, and so we did that by first looking at, you know, we're going to talk a little bit later about the, the when they receive the item, but first at the point of purchase. And so we wanted to do a few things where we want them to comment, but we also want to be able to moderate that in case you get garbage comments, because sometimes you get things that it's not even really a comment. It's almost like they mistyped it or there's things like that. But we want to then encourage them to share that. So I thought it was very important sometimes at these conferences people tend to give very high level things and not real actionable items. So we really took a clip off our site and we want to just show you exactly what we're doing. Um, so this is basically after someone purchases a book on iSeeMe, there's a pop-up modal that comes up. And, and this is a picture of it here. And we're offering the user basically 20% off their next purchase. So we're hitting them right at that peak to tell us what they loved about the purchase. Um, and you can see here, they can also choose a thumbnail where you can review each product and it shares it instantly on Facebook. After they go and they do that aspect, then we try and get hit them up on Pinterest and Twitter as well to see if we can continue that going. And the results when you hit them up before the purchase are staggering and I'll show you some of those later. So this is, this is what it looks like when a user posts to their newsfeed. It has the comment that they just put about our site and then it also has a link directly to the item that they purchased. Um, so what really I think though makes this special is so you have that's, that's the aspect of sharing our products. But what really makes it special is when you look in the bottom corner here it says social buzz. And this is a, if, if any of you are on the internet you can go on any of our web pages and every product page has this. And when you, hit the, when you hit the product page, that social buzz is going to pop up for a second or two, and it's going to show you those reviews or testimonials that people were giving. And you can click on those, and the great part is with these, since it's at the point of purchase, nothing can go wrong at this point. So every review is 100% positive, and you get hundreds of them because we're incentivizing people to do so. so that's all great, but you need to kind of look at the results. And the results really speak for themselves and allow you to go back to anybody and say, we need to be doing this immediately because we can make a significant difference overnight if you're looking for that you know, silver bullet. And so what we found is that people that interacted with this widget um, converted four times higher than people that didn't see the widget at all. Uh, when we A-B tested it, we saw a 20% lift, lift in conversions. And when we referred traffic, we're able to track all those people that come back. And we saw that they were converting at about 14.69%, which is better than most of our channels. We're usually in the 8 to 9 range. Um, and what's interesting about this is a lot of times when you have reviews, and you've all been there where you've had a product that you we're shopping for and you go there and you see the reviews thing and there's just no reviews and you think well maybe maybe nobody wanted to buy this or why isn't this product selling and it almost becomes a negative to have a product that doesn't have reviews well with this we don't have that problem so even our items that don't get purchased much those have very high number of reviews even new products since it's all in real time we'll send out an email uh, you know, launching a new a new book. And since it's all in real time, as the reviews come in, within five minutes we've got reviews on the site for that particular product, even though no one has received the product at that time. So it really gets people people interested and significantly helps. We currently are using Shop Socially in a method that is more like a widgetized thing. So it's not technically on our site. So it's very easy to implement. We're launching a new website here. It should be live, I think, in a couple weeks. 
where we're taking these results and we're going to actually integrate them so it's part of the site because we aren't getting the social lift that we should from this and that's just kind of uh, free traffic that we're we're kind of giving away so so Ryan talked about the first engaging the users at the first point of excitement which is right after they make a purchase so there what we're doing is we are trying to capture their sentiments, their story behind why they decided to buy that particular product. Right? So it's not exactly a review because they haven't received the product yet, but it is a positive sentiment that you're capturing from the users at the point of purchase. Um, and, and, and as you mentioned, the participation rate is incredibly high because you're getting users at the point of excitement when they're really happy about what they bought. Right? So now let's look at the second point of excitement. This is when the users receive the product, right? And again, they haven't used it yet. They haven't necessarily tried the product out. So it's not a review that we are asking them to write. We are just trying to get them to share their excitement once again. So, uh, so right after they, they, they see the product, the strategy there is to get them to take a picture. And now this is not necessarily true or is, is a valid strategy for all the different products. You know, in, in certain product categories, the visual reviews will make sense. Um, you know, if you're selling printer cables, I don't think people would like to take pictures and <laughs> post uh, pictures of printer cables. But you know, if you're selling uh, you know, apparel or furniture or many other product categories, then these visual testimonials can, can really benefit your business. And human beings in general, they are very visual. Uh, you know, 90% uh, of the information that our brain pro processes is all visual, right? Yet, mostly the user-generated content that we currently see on the website is all textual. So how do we get more visual content which is user-generated on the website, which is what we're going to talk about next? Uh, so the first step is to ask the users. You know, we heard that in the previous uh, presentation as well. You go to ask the customers, and you go to ask them at the right point of time. So you can ask them in a variety of different ways. You can send them send an, ex an email to existing customers, asking them to take a picture and share it. Uh, they can upload it on your website, or they can share it with a hashtag, uh, with your company's hashtag, and then you know you can aggregate them automatically. Um, you can insert a flyer with every shipment. So in this case, um, what Canvas on Demand did was they inserted a, shipment, uh, a flyer in every shipment and said, hey, you know, you just bought this photo canvas. What does that represent? You know, what, what is this canvas, uh, what is the story behind this canvas? Um, so they, they asked the users or all the shoppers to come back to their website, upload a picture of the photo canvas they created, and write the story behind that particular photo canvas, right? Uh, here's another example, uh, Beretta, you know, they did this promotion in their stores uh, around Christmas time frame where they had these uh, placards that users could hold and say, all I want for Christmas is you fill out whatever it is that you want for Christmas, take a picture, post it with, a, with their hashtag, and then you could be entered to win that particular product, right? So those are some uh, interesting strategies of how you can engage the customers uh, in store or, uh, you know, uh, with every shipment and how you can get them to post pictures. The next thing is, what do you do with these pictures, right? So you got the customers to post these pictures. How do you get these pictures, and how do you use them on your website effectively? So again, I'll share a couple of ideas with you. Uh, uh, this is uh, an example from Unique Vintage. They sell uh, clothing. So what they're doing is they are asking their customers to upload their pictures directly on the website, or share it on social channels using their hashtag, unique vintage. Okay? And then they're automatically aggregating all these pictures and they're showing them in a photo strip on their homepage. So if you go to their website, you will see it towards the bottom of the page, there is a photo strip of all the user-generated photos that they've aggregated. Um, you can also tag these photos to specific products. So now when the users are visiting a specific product page, they can not only see the stock image that you have put together for the product, they can also see all the user-generated photos for that particular product as well. So that adds another kind of social testimonial for your products. So in addition to the, the textual reviews, now you can also see pictures of the product that other users have posted 
uh, which, which, which is highly engaging. Um, another way you can uh, utilize this content is uh, what Canvas On Demand did, for example, was uh, they created this gallery of photos on their website. So remember what they did was they were asking users to upload a photo of their photo canvas and write a story of what that canvas represents. And if you see the participation, it was just phenomenal. You know, people posted pictures of the canvases of their, you know, which represented the marriage or uh, the birth of their, uh, their kid, uh, pets, buying a new house, and they literally wrote stories about what that photo canvas represents for them, right? So this was just a wonderful way of creating uh, visual content uh, for the website. Um, so again, what Beretta did was they also aggregated all of these uh, photos that the users were posting, uh, the, the contest that we talked about in, in store where you could, you know, um, on, on the placard you could say all I want for Christmas is X. So they aggregated all these photos on their website so everybody else who was visiting the website could see the excitement that other users have about their products, right? So these are a few different ways you can uh, utilize this user-generated content uh, which is visual in nature. Um, as I said, you can also allow users to upload photos directly uh, from the website. Um, other things that you can do, interesting ideas that, that, that you know, Ryan talked about earlier as well, is if you want to incentivize users as well. So there's a great opportunity here where you can say, hey, upload your photo and you can earn a few loyalty points or maybe you can earn a discount of the next purchase. So if you really want the, the user participation to increase significantly, you can incentivize users for this action as well. Um, uh, you can tag all the user-generated photos with the related products so they become shoppable. You know, if you're posting pictures on Instagram, etc., you know, people look at those pictures and say, that's a great product, but how do I find this? How do I find this product on the website? Uh, so there is the ability to tag every photo with the corresponding product so people can find that product very easily on the website. and uh, some results from that. So uh, what we have seen uh, across our customers that they are able to generate hundreds of authentic user-generated visual content that they can use on their website. Uh, and on an average, they've seen about a 21% increase in conversion rate from adding the visual content on their website. Uh, and the user engagement has gone up by about 15%. Um, Ryan, you had some thoughts about how you are planning to use this as well? you want to talk about that? I don't need that, I guess. So what we're trying to do, and with this launch of the website, what, how we're going to do it, is we're going to have our personalized books, and we're inserting, like he was saying, an offer for 20% off, and we'll test different versions with... Um, with the first set, when they were doing it at the purchase, we test different versions there. We found 20% was our key spot. You know, we tried 10%, 5%, and really no offer at all, and that ended up winning out of everything else. So then what we want to do now on this side is we're going to offer them another 20% to put a flyer in that has certain hashtags to it that we're going to relate then back to that product. So what we can do then is moderate that content so when a user comes to one of our product pages, they see, sometimes in a lot of our main products, they'll see hundreds of these testimonials about the product. And then under that, we have pictures of the users actually using the product at the time that they received it and showing the kids reading the books. And so I think it's going to be just fantastic when, when we get that up and running here in a couple of weeks. Yeah, so that's, that's a great use case. You know, imagine if you can see... Um, pictures of happy kids, surprise kids, who have just seen their photo um, in a storybook, and, and you see the pictures of those kids, and then you say, hey, I want my kid to look like that as well, right? And that's a great motivation for you to buy that product. Um, so if you do a quick comparison with the existing or the most common UGC strategies that everyone is using currently, which is reviews and Q&A, so we are not saying that you should replace them. They are highly effective, and you should continue to use them. Uh, but just as a quick comparison, uh, both the, the strategies that you're using currently, as well as the, some of the new ideas that we have discussed, if you do the comparison, they are both highly effective. Uh, with reviews in Q&A, typically the participation rate ends up being slightly on the lower side. It's kind of hard to get people to participate. Um, the strategies that we discussed today, because we are engaging users at the right point in time, 
the participation rate is typically at least 10 times higher compared to reviews or Q&A, right? So we typically see, you know, 10, 15% of the customers participate in that. Uh, the sentiments, again, with uh, reviews and Q&A can be mixed, uh, which is not a bad thing necessarily because it looks more authentic. But with, with the two strategies that we discussed, because we are not really asking users to review the product, we are just asking them to share their excitement, the content is always positive, right? So you're getting a lot more people to participate and you're getting a lot more positive content as well. And then the final uh, comparison point is that, you know, typically reviews and Q&A are only on your website, so there is only an on-site strategy um, uh, attached to those. With product stories and visual commerce, in both these cases, there is built-in social sharing strategy as well. So what you're doing is you're getting both the off-site as well as the on-site benefit from that. The off-site benefit is when it gets shared on social channels, it generates word-of-mouth recommendations and referral traffic back to your site. And then when it's shown on-site, then obviously it's helping you with the conversion rate as well as your SEO rank. Yeah? All right. So I promise that we'll also briefly talk about how can you boost participation in your existing strategies as well, which is reviews and Q&A. So we talked about the two new strategies, which probably most of you are not currently leveraging. So hopefully, um, uh, you know, some food for thought there. And then in order to boost participation in uh, your existing strategies, what we found works really well is if you gamify the experience a little bit, right? Um, so in this case, for example, uh, this is one of the nutrition supplement sites. What they are doing is they are saying, hey, if you review this product, um, you know, you can earn uh, 100 loyalty points, right? So if the review is approved, that is, uh, you can get 100 points. So they have a loyalty program where they're rewarding users not just for purchases, but they're rewarding users for all kinds of engagements. So they're saying, hey, if you review the product, you can get 100 points. Uh, you know, if you share a picture, you can get 200 points and, and so on, right? And they have seen that there's been a uh, you know, remarkable increase in participation, obviously, because now the users are being appreciated for, for writing reviews. Um, similarly, you know, for answering questions, because again, the users are helping uh, other customers by answering questions. So if you want to show appreciation, you can do that by rewarding them some loyalty points, right? Um, so those are a couple of ideas in terms of, you know, if you gamify the experience and, and, and you let the users earn some loyalty points or, you know, some other incentive or benefit, you can significantly increase participation in your existing strategies as well. Uh, one other, um, um, I, you know, strategy that you can think about is by creating a referral program. So this is mostly off-site, right? This is, there is no on-site component here. But if you're really looking for, again, user-generated content where people are recommending your products to their friends and they're saying nice things about your brand and your products, then creating a referral program can be a very effective way to do that as well. So I'll do a quick summary and hopefully we'll have some time for Q&A as well. Uh, so a quick summary is for your existing channels, reviews and Q&A, if you're looking to increase participation, you know, think about if there is a way to gamify the experience um, or, or create some incentives for the users. And then we talked about adding two new strategies uh, to improve participation and to generate UGC at scale. Uh, the first one, we call it product stories, which is where you're engaging the users right after they bought the product and you're saying, hey, you just bought this product. What do you like about this product? You know, why, why did you buy this product, right? Um, so you can get an uplift in SEO rank as well as a great boost in conversion rate. Uh, and the second strategy we talked about was visual commerce, where you're engaging users at the second point of excitement, which is right after they receive the product and asking them to take a picture and upload that. So with that, we have five minutes for Q&A. Okay, we have a few minutes for uh, Q&A. There are mics in the aisle uh, on your right. If you have questions for uh, Jay or uh, Ryan, please step over there. Uh, looks like we have someone stepping up to the mic over there. Go ahead. Uh, very good presentation. Uh, the question I had was you're having a lot of this user-generated content, both images, especially images. Are you getting any consent from the customer as a part of your uh, 
whatever uh, process you follow to post those pictures because you are trying to use them on the website, maybe tag them on Instagram. So I just wanted to get your perspective on that. Can you turn on the, the table mics? They're probably on, Jay. Go ahead. No? No. I, oh, now they're on. All right. So uh, if the users are uploading photos directly on the website, then they are agreeing to the terms and conditions, and they are obviously saying that, yes, you can use that content. Uh, otherwise, I think it's a little bit of a gray area right now in terms of whether or not you can use it without their consent. Um, so we have seen different customers uh, you know, have a different opinion on that. Some customers are OK. They are saying, look, the users are using my hashtag, so I can use the content without asking them, and others want to be more careful and say, I want to get explicit permission from the users before I use the content. Uh, in, in either case, you're not really using the user photos for any advertising. You're not using it any advertising campaign, et cetera. So it is relatively safe uh, to be able to use it. But still, I would say um, we don't really necessarily provide a legal opinion on that. That's really up to our customers to decide whether they want explicit user consent or not. Next question. Hey, guys. Yeah, fantastic mm -hmm. ideas. Thanks for sharing. Uh, I've got a two-part question. <clears throat> One is just to kind of restate what I think you were talking about, how the process works, which is essentially for your, your video engagement ideas or your, your user engagement ideas, it's at the point of purchase and, again, at the point of receipt. You would like people to share via social channel either their excitement via, via uh, visual media and or describe what you love about this product and why you bought it. Uh, but then you follow it up by saying that you can, you know, you're showing that those, those insights, which I thought was a great idea, on the product detail pages itself. But then you had a bullet point that said you can also bring these in via API. So my question is, when you're doing just the original ideas, you're not, how are you generating SEO value? Because that content isn't on your actual site. It's being brought in via you know, uh, external sources and showing via you know, JSP or front-end technology. And if you bring it in via API, how are you coexisting the exact same content, one in-page, one overlay page? Yeah, so uh, as, as Ryan mentioned earlier as well, if you're using the widget uh, method, then it is, Google will not crawl it. So you're not going to get the SEO benefit from that. To get the SEO benefit, you need to have the content natively added to your web pages. Uh, so that's where the APIs come into picture, where um, you know, using the APIs, you can get all the content, and you can make sure it is natively added to the pages. Uh, when you do that, then you can get the SEO benefit as well. If you're adding it natively on the page, then you don't necessarily want the overlay uh, kind of an option. right? So then you're going to be adding it natively in the page itself. So you're not going to do both. You're not going to have a widget and the native integration. You'll do one or the other. The native, uh, the, the widget integration is very easy because you know you can be up and running within literally minutes. Uh, the API integration takes a little bit longer, but then it gives you the SEO benefit as well. So those are sort of the the pros and cons. So no, so what, what you do is you take... You repeat the question? Uh, yeah, the, so the question is, how do you know which product, which image is tagged to which product, right? Yeah, so if it's a user-generated image, obviously you don't know which product it belongs to. So the first step is to take that image and tag it with one or more products that it represents, right? And then you can use it two different ways. If it is an aggregate view, somebody can click on that image and look at the related products. And when they're on that product page, they can see all the images that have been tagged to that particular product. But the tagging has to be done first in order for make, to, to make that connection. OK, we're out of time. So please uh, thank uh, Jay Rowat and Ryan Goldberg for a great session.